Uh, you know, we've had a nationwide conversation for a long time about higher taxes on the wealthy, the degree to which that pushes them out to other states, uh, loss of uh, businesses incorporated in the state. Clearly, you've made a, a political calculation that this is worth the risk. Why? Yeah, I think this is something that progressive tax rates that the majority of states have. Uh, Illinois doesn't have it because it's not in our Constitution. However, we've had progressive rates at the federal level for more than 100 years. And in that time, we've seen tremendous economic growth in our economy. I think it's time that Illinois mirrors what other states and our federal government have been doing for a long time. Do you think um, Griffin and Zell have had any impact at all on, on sentiment regarding this? Yeah, I, I think in Illinois there has been a lot of advertising, a lot of messaging on this issue. Not all of it entirely factual or accurate, uh, but we don't really have a competitive U.S. Senate race. Uh, we don't have any of our statewide races, constitutional offices up this year. So this clearly has been uh, driving most spending here in Illinois. Uh, Mr. Treasurer, good morning. It's hard for me to see how you tax your way out of Illinois' problems. I mean, if that was going to work, shouldn't it have worked in 2011? Well, I think we've had a structural deficit in Illinois for a long time. I think it's clear that there are budget deficits not just being faced by Illinois this cycle, but by states across this country. And a big part of that has to do with COVID and this pandemic. And so I think it's imperative that the Senate comes back and passes some, some kind of economic stimulus for states and municipalities. But what about spending? What about that real structural issue? I mean, given COVID on top of everything else Illinois has been facing, are you ready to really take some big sweeping actions and, and try to put this problem to bed? What are you going to do? Well, I think there's an election tomorrow that will determine whether the General Assembly has the ability to have graduated rates. Uh, I'm hopeful that passes. If that doesn't, the General Assembly will be coming back during veto session in a couple of weeks. And I think, quite frankly, they're going to have to look at revenue increases. They're going to have to look at spending cuts. They're going to have to look at both of them to get ourselves out of this budget deficit. How would you, um, how would you explain or characterize the nature of spending cuts so far? Have you, I mean, to use a, an old and bad metaphor, are we cutting into bone here? And if there were further cuts on the line, where do you think they would be centered uh, in the months to come? Well, I, I think that we've had to make some of these cuts in the past. And I think in the past, sometimes, the General Assembly didn't make the right choice. Rather than making the cuts that needed to be made or raising the revenue, they just delayed payments into our pension system. And that's what got us into this position. We have such a large unfunded liability of our state pension system. I think it's clear our Supreme Court has told us we need to make those payments. And so we need to have the revenue to do that. Kicking the can down the road additionally is not an option anymore. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.